What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy, man? It's the Bronco with the Frog coming at you with another reaction video. A hey, interesting concept, super interesting. By the man Z, man, so go subscribe to him, go get him the 10k for making this video. The seven deadly sins as footballers. Now, me personally, I don't really know too much about the seven deadly sins. I think that's like a, a Catholic thing. Um, and I know the anime seven deadly sins. Now, going through the timestamps, apparently, you have wrath, you got sloth. You got lust, wrath, sloth, lust. You got pride. You got gluttony. You got greed. And then you got, I don't know the last one, but those six right there. So, hey, let's go ahead and see what go down. Seven Daddy Sins footballers. They get it. They are seven footballers who together perfectly represent the seven deadly sins, and I will be going over them all starting with the sin of wrath. Wrath, wrath is defined as an uncontrolled feeling of vengeful anger, rage, and even hatred. Okay, you, you can use a lot of people for wrath now. You use wrath. When I heard wrath, I think a goddamn... Vengeful hold on, let me anger, pause. rage, and... When I think of wrath, I think of like Roy King. You can put Roy King right there for wrath. Goddamn Pepe. Any goddamn slob head that just can't hold their emotions. Goddamn defenders that's just going stupid. You got Zinedine headbutt people with that damn ram head. They all can fall for wrath. But let's go ahead and see who they go put. And even hatred. A perfect match for this description is Zinedine Zidane. Zinedine, yup. Zidane is widely regarded as one of the greatest footballers of all smirk. time. Look at that damn smirk. Look at that damn smirk. Look at that wrathful smirk. He evil looking ass, goddamn Frenchman. You feel me? Look at that boy. Yeah, he's the perfect figurehead for wrath. Look at this damn sly ass. Smirk. Regarded as one of the he greatest the footballers of all time, he captivated fans with his talent and was one of the dominant stars of the early 2000s. He was renowned for his exceptional ball control, vision, and effortless ability to dribble past opponents, transforming football matches into artistic <laughs> performances. What made Zidane truly iconic? was his ability to turn up on big occasions to secure victory for his team. A notable instance of this Brazil. was his grace in the 1998 World yep. Cup final against Brazil. Even though uh, it's a lot of controversy. No, that was 2002. When, which one was Ronaldo sick? When OG Ronaldo was sick. Which secured France's first World Cup title with his performances I don't think it was the this 1998 one. Ballon d'Or. He also scored an incredible volley in the 2001 Champions League final Ooh, against yep, Bayern Leverkusen. Leverkusen, which remains one of the most iconic goals in the tournament's history. Look at that Despite lead. his exceptional ball control, Zidane found it difficult. Oh to my gosh, he's clawing his damn face off. Hey, I like how dude teammates check, bro. If this was current day, you see how Zidane got a got a goddamn face rake like he Ric Flair. I like how they teammate around him like, boy, what the hell you doing to our teammate these days? They'll just be sitting there looking at him trying to push him. Well, you don't never let somebody do your teammate like these. Control his temper with his anger sometimes getting the best of him, leading to very rash reactions to the slightest of provocations. The mm. most infamous display of his hot-headedness came in the 2006 World yep. Cup final, where he head-butted Italian defender <laughs> Marco Materazzi in the 110th minute of extra time, allowing Italy to drag a dominant French side to the penalty shootout, where they defeated France to win the 2006 World Cup. This wouldn't be the first time his temper cost his team. The script for this moment was written six oh, years man. earlier in a Champions League match between Juventus and Hamburg in 2000, where Zidane Damn, he still had button folk. I thought it was just that one instance. It butted Jochen Keens, resulting in him receiving oh, a red card bro. and Juventus suffering While a three I was on the Jochen ground, Keens, all the hit resulting his ass in with him with the booga, 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 with the meanest three piece uppercut on his damn ass, boy. Receiving a red card and Juventus suffering a 3 1 loss in his absence. This incident led to Zidane receiving a five match ban from UEFA preventing him from participating any further in the Champions League, which ultimately led to Juventus being eliminated in the group stages. Mm. Given Zidane's history of confrontational behavior and how crucial he was for the French team at the time, it was unsurprising that the Italians targeted him in the 2006 final, with <laughs> Italian free. defender Marco Materazzi taking the lead in the attempt to provoke him by repeatedly pulling his jersey at any okay. chance he got. Okay, so they was getting under his skin. So it was, it, well, of course, I don't think he did it for no reason, but they know he already had a, a history of hot headedness. That's why you designate players on the other team who's not that good. Hey. Your job is to go out there and get under Zidane's skin so he can do something nutty and get kicked the hell out of the game so we can get the advantage. However, Zidane initially responded with a cheeky remark. If you want my jersey, I will give it to you after the match. <laughs> to which Matarazzi replied, I don't want your jersey, I want your sister. 
Hearing oh! these words, Zidane lost his temper and headbutted Matarazzi. Ah! His sending off weakened the French team, allowing Italy to win hey, the final on pet Shout out that boy, uh, Matarazzi. He the reason why Italy ended up winning that damn World Cup just by this quote right here. Off the top of his head, that's off the dome. I don't want your jersey. I want your sister. That boy Zidane say, what? What you say? He say, boom! Chest put a hole in that boy's chest, but hearing these words, Zidane lost his temper Ooh. and headbutted Madurette. He charged it up. Y'all know how hearing Rams, y'all know how they be like backing up a little bit and then they get to cramming. That's how Zidane look. How he look, how he posture up. You see the posture? I don't you want your feet? jersey. I want your sister. He can't be hearing unbalanced. Words, Zidane lost. Boom. Lost. Boom. See how he hit the little two feet formation so he can lunge off two feet to lunge that damn head to his chest. Look at that. Boom. His temper Boom. and oh, yeah. That's quality his form, off Zidane. The French team, allowing Italy to win the yeah, final on penalties. This incident marked the end of Zidane's professional football career, as he had already announced he would retire after the 2006 World Cup. Had he maintained his composure, Zidane could have led France to their second mm. World Cup victory in 2006 and would have won the Ballon d'Or in 2000. Hey boy, However, got it despite his shortcomings, Zidane's legacy as a football icon remains intact as he is still well acknowledged I know he was as one of the greatest head. footballers of all time. While I can say that about Zidane, I can't say that about the next footballer on my list as his legacy as a footballer is now heavily debated, and he is the footballer I have chosen to represent the sin of sloth. Sloth, sloth is defined as the reluctance to work or make any effort also known as laziness. Laziness, ah, uh, you can do a lot of people like that. You can do Eda Hazard, word on the street, um, you know, Gareth Bale, his career, he was more concerned about golfing and stuff. And of course, like he say, who does he have a for slot? Mr. Whose career Mr. Paul went downhill Mr. Due to his himself. Is Paul Pogba. Pogba's career took off when he left man. Manchester United to join Juventus in the summer of 2012, becoming an integral member of a Juventus team that dominated Italian football look for consecutive him, years. Damn. <laughs> integral member of Perm a Juventus team that hurt, dominated. Trying to, trying to look like Neymar or something like that. Look at that shit, man. Hated Italian football. I'm glad that man Vinicius done done move past his little permit her. Appreciate the her the way it is, man. Ain't no wrong with having nigga her. Integral member of Ain't no wrong with having that with African her yang, bro. You is not no damn uh white person. You is not damn, you feel me? Just wear your Italian national football texture. for consecutive years. Pogba was a special talent, and like many gifted footballers, he relied heavily on his natural abilities. He was not one to aggressively mark his opponent to regain possession, and his performance often suffered when he was burdened with responsibilities on the pitch as he played better when he was allowed to roam freely, especially yeah. around the opposition's 18-yard box. That's a lot of However, players. Pogba compensated for his work rate with his brilliance on the ball and his ability to create goal-scoring opportunities out of nothing. Woo! At Juventus, Pogba was surrounded by experienced players such as Andrea Perlo, Sammy Kadira and Claudio Marchiso, players who freed him of defensive duties, allowing him to roam freely as a box-to-box -box midfielder. The flaw in his game would become evident when he returned to Manchester United in the summer of 2016 for a then record fee of 105 million euros, million, leaving million, a fluid bro. attacking Juventus side to play under Jose Mourinho, a coach who is notoriously known for his rigid defensive style of play. And like he said, rigid defensive style rigid rigid rules playing in a rule set like that paul <coughs> god damn paul pogba don't like that he liked to play free like a damn butterfly at united pogba was burdened with defensive duties as he was deployed as a deep lying creative midfielder mm. having to track back to help defend and mark as a result his slothfulness became evident as his performance suffered so it sounds like united criticized. failed him the number of times i've seen him in games where he's not sprinting back or running back. He's talking about body language, throwing his arms up in the air. What well, if you're going to be a good teammate, then you've you got to run back. You've got to run back when you're defending. The real top and great players make their team better and they make their teammates better. He doesn't do that. He plays for himself. No, he's a, he's a, he's a big problem. Well, for uh, Mourinho would, however, come to Pogba's defense, calling his critics football Einsteins. Mourinho and Pogba had a good relationship in Pogba's first season at United, That's as Pogba up. was instrumental in United winning the Europa League, which he scored in the final. However, their relationship quickly turned Never sour mind. the following <laughs> season, with Mourinho labeling Pogba a virus. Woo! Started... He called that boy a virus! You know how disrespectful that is? Damn! That boy say, boy, you is a walking virus. Virus to the locker room, a cancer to the city. Pogba suffered a hamstring injury against Basel in the Champions League at the beginning of the 2017 to 2018 season. 
Instead of staying at the club to work with the physios on his rehabilitation, Pogba opted to go to Miami for rehabilitation, mm. a journey which he took his Hard. girlfriend along with him. Mourinho would learn about this when a paparazzi sent him a picture of Pogba mm. and his girlfriend in Miami. He then mm. forwarded the picture to Pogba's then agent Mino Raiola with a cryptic message, while we work, he is on holiday. Mm. Pogba's return to the squad was marked by a poor run of games which further strained their relationship. This I mean, a I mean, hey, if I'm injured and shit, and, 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 and I gotta sit here with a hamstring injury, I can't play, I'll be in Miami too. I wouldn't want to be in damn Manchester, England. <laughs> I'm going on vacation, vacation too, goddamn. Confrontation between the two in training, and as a result, Pogba was dropped to the bench with the way they look at him? between the two in training, and as a result, Pogba was dropped to the bench with Mourinho preferring Scott McTominay in the midfield. After a humiliating 3-1 defeat to Liverpool, United parted ways with Mourinho and appointed Solskjaer as interim coach. Under Solskjaer, Pogba reclaimed his status as United's oh. main man. In his final seasons at United, Pogba displayed worrying signs of an eventual decline, as he was rarely fit to play, and when he did, he found it difficult to impact games significantly. And you could understand why United were no longer keen on renewing his contract, which led to his return to Juventus in the summer of 2022 a club where he enjoyed so much success in his youthful years, but this time, things will turn work. out differently. He suffered a knee injury during preseason that kept him sidelined until after the 2022 World Cup. He made his second debut against Torino in February 2023, and by March, he suffered another muscle injury in training, ruling him out for three weeks. Mm. Pogba returned to the starting lineup in May for a league match against Cremonese, but was substituted after just 23 minutes Heart due to a damn. muscle injury which ultimately ruled him out for the rest of the season. As if he hadn't suffered enough, in a league match against Udinese in August, Pogba failed a doping test after yeah. testing positive for dehydropiandrosterone, a performance enhancement compound that promotes the production of testosterone. He was then handed a four-year ban from football by the Italian National Anti-Doping Tribunal. This means that by the time he returns to football, he would be 34 years old and well out of his prime years as a footballer. In the end, there is no doubt about Paul Pogba's enormous talent, but he was the type of player that was at his best when he was surrounded by teammates with incredible work ethic and leadership. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, like I said in the last video, I heard that he got his contract, he got that his band shortened and he's coming back to football soon. I don't know the validity behind that statement. His slothfulness was often a result of a lack of focus, <laughs> God, as he was easily distracted by off-the-pitch temptations and always needed others to keep him in line. Deadly scene. Talking about temptations, the next player on my list fell head over heels into temptation, and he is the footballer who perfectly represents the sin of lust. Lust, lust is defined as an intense or unrestrained sexual craving. Oh, boy, I ain't gonna lie. It'd be a lot of footballers just out there flocking. You can put any football on footballer on her any sport athlete, period. Lust, bro. It's all types of pussy that's just thrown at all. At every celebrity athlete. If you got money, hey, they throwing it at you. Throwing it at you. You gotta be, it takes a special type of people. It's mainly like the Muslims who are able to keep they uh uh keep their discipline and stuff like that. But if you ain't Muslim, boy, hey, it's all types of temptations. It's all types of females I heard thrown at you. Like I say, boy, if I was an athlete, tch, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so who he fit to put for lust though? A footballer who ruined his legacy due to his lustfulness is Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs, he... ah, that boy is a fucker. That boy, that, that boy be getting into it. He be I heard about you and Wayne Rooney and them and what y'all boys been doing. I heard about y'all gigs. Think about Manchester United's glory days. One name unavoidably comes to mind, Ryan Giggs. Giggsy is the most decorated footballer in English football winning a record Easy. 13 Premier League titles. Giggs's childhood was far from easy. His father was a rugby player who abused his mother, and by the time Why he was 14, like his parents separated with the <laughs> Wizards' third player. Say that boy don't look like Usabio. Giggs's childhood was far from easy. His father Look at that. Unless I'm tripping on this Usabio look different, but did he look like him to me? She it look like a black man right here. There was a rugby player who abused his mother, and by mm. the time he was 14, his parents separated with his mom having to work two jobs to take care of him and I his younger brother, jobs. Rodri. As a young boy, Giggs saw football as the only way to escape poverty and support his family. He signed his first professional contract in 1990 at the age of 17 after scoring a hat-trick against Manchester United's academy team at a trial game. 
While Giggs made waves as one of the most promising talents in the league, helping United to win the Premier League title in his second senior season, hey. his younger brother Rodri, on the other hand, was a troubled kid who hanged with the wrong crowd and got expelled from school. Mm. In an attempt to follow in his big brother's footsteps, Rodri tried his hands at football in Turkey, but his contract was terminated when it was discovered he stole money from the club chairman. Oh. On his return home, Rodri went rogue as he started dealing drugs fighting at nightclubs, really? and sometimes selling stories about Giggs to the press. Due to this unruly behavior, Giggs kept a distance from his brother. However, everything changed when Rodri met his wife Natasha in 2003. Despite being married at the time, Giggs began to rekindle his bond with his brother, even visiting his home when he was not around. I remember once when the first house we got, I got home and he was there with his mate. I'm thinking, what the fuck's he doing? Because he never comes to my house. Yeah. Never. Never comes, what's he doing here? And then later found out that he was finding out where I lived. Rodri wasn't suspicious at all, as he was happy he was talking to his brother again. I mean, shit, I, I don't know where this story is finna go, but, but, but brother over here snitching on, oh, snitching on big bro. Big bro, and, and they talking about some money and he drug dealing and, and oh. However, his bubble was shattered on June 6th, 2011, when his wife's mother arrived at his doorstep holding a copy of the Sun newspaper. On the front page revealed the bold headline, Gix's eight-year affair with brother's wife. <sighs> Not one. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. Not seven. Eight years going unnoticed. That's that's a sneaky that the a hey. throw that boy in the damn uh uh sneaky sneaker hall of fame. That boy is a gooner. Eight years undetected. Boy, I'm talking about they kept that boy. Giggs would initially deny the allegations, but when Rodri told him he had tangible evidence, Giggs confessed. An account by Rodri's wife Natasha narrated how she used her influence as a real estate agent to find houses for their tryst. I worked mm. as an estate agent, so I had access to properties that we'd meet. And, I mean, obviously, I would make sure that nobody else was going to be there at any point, but, okay. yeah, that's pretty much how it was done. Gosh. In the heat of the scandal in 2011, it was also revealed that Giggs also had a six-month affair with former Miss Wales Imogen Thomas. After their relationship became exposed, Imogen confessed in an interview, I called it off a million times, but he kept coming back. He knew it was wrong, he said as much, but he was pursuing me. Giggs' marriage to Stacey Cook would, however, survive the scandals for a further six years doing me. Do you really think hey, that she buddy. give a damn that he was married? Generally, me to you speaking, do you really think Miss Man right here, Miss Wells, do you think she gave a damn that Mr. Giggs was married? She ain't give a goddamn. She only saying this because the cameras came. Like I said, if you got money, if you got status, Women gonna be there. They gonna throw themselves at you. Gotta be disciplined. He kept coming back. He knew it was wrong. He said as much, but he was pursuing me. Giggs' marriage to Stacey Cook would, however, survive the scandals for a further six years until 2017, when they divorced with Giggs, paying a whopping 40 million euros in settlement. Woo! You might think that Giggs had learned his lessons, but nothing could he be did. further from reality. In July 2023, he was once again in the dark corner. It was alleged that he subjected his girlfriend, Kate Greville, to abuse. Oh Giggs will, however, be found not guilty due to lack of sufficient evidence. However, during the trial, he confessed to having cheated on Kate with eight other women. What are you doing? What are you doing, yeah? What are you doing? You're the most decorated football in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. You know, ever. You played for one of the biggest clubs from 17 to, tw to 41. You're ruining your fucking legacy. What are you doing? Yeah. I hate seeing brothers beefed up, bro. Y'all family, fool. Y'all blood. I ain't supposed to be beefed up like this, man. Hash that shit out. For what? For yeah. some skirt. Unlike Zidane, Giggs' legacy was hugely affected by his lustfulness. A good instance of this is that despite being the most successful footballer in Premier League history, he is yet to be inducted into the Premier League Hall of Damn. Fame. Despite his demons, Giggs has a trophy cabinet that fills him with pride. Talking about pride, the next player on my list doesn't have the trophy cabinet to justify his enormous ego, and he is the footballer I have chosen Bad to titty. represent the sin of pride. Pride, pride is characterized yeah, pride. by arrogance, having a nonchalant attitude, and overestimation of oneself. I mean, that's a lot of football. I feel like you gotta have a lot. If you're a footballer, you gotta have a sense of pride. But this pride is talking about arrogance. Mm, let me think of a current 
football, I, I think that that, that that could fit this scheme that's not Mario Balotelli. Real arrogant overestimation of oneself is the key word here. So basically, ass. Hmm, who is ass but think that is just so good? Hmm. Can't think of one. For, for right now, a lot of people these days, they're pretty humble. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like Zaha... I feel like Zaha overestimated himself a little bit, real nonchalant, real arrogant back when he played for uh, Palace and whatnot. Zaha is one that came to mind. A footballer who fits this free. description is Mario Balotelli. In the world of football bad boys, Mario Balotelli bad. stands out as a poster boy, and this is particularly impressive considering the iconic footballers who could lay <laughs> claim to this title. It seems almost as if every footballing genius is accompanied by their own set of demons. Balotelli's childhood was far from easy, Growing up as a young black footballer in Italy, he suffered a lot of racial abuse which forged his unruly behavior. He quickly understood that if he was to survive as a footballer then he had to unapologetically be himself. After a failed trial at Barcelona, Balotelli joined Inter Milan in 2006. His stupid. time at Inter was marked by controversies and disciplinary issues. Damn. In his second senior season with the club, he was suspended by manager Jose Mourinho for the remainder of the 2000s. Well, I already know him and Mar Mourinho was butting heads. If y'all, if Mourinho is like how he say y'all robotic and and real like military like or like you know, I already know that. Senior heads, season boy. with the club, he was suspended by manager Jose Mourinho for the remainder of the 2009 season for not showing up at training after a poor performance against Barcelona in the Champions League during which he was booed by the Inter fans Balotelli responded by removing his jersey and throwing it to the ground this further inflamed tensions as he was confronted by fans after the match damn that boy ain't give a damn he say both get all that football See, he say I'm a human boy y'all go boo me he say man Threw the shirt off of his ass. Balotelli's most notorious this moment at Inter came when he appeared on national television wearing the jersey of local rivals AC Milan he out of line that had his for that. name on it. This proved to be the final straw he as he was sold to Manchester City one. in the summer of 2010. Despite the fresh start in Manchester, Balotelli's demons followed him. Just Bro, he remind me of the footballer version of Antonio Brown. Y'all know Antonio Brown. He did the same thing taking the taking the jersey out during the game, but the difference is he took his jersey off the shirt underneath and ran like on the end zone on the field. During the game, he ran out that hole, teeing everybody up shirtless. And be like, all right, y'all, I'm out. And then walked out the damn stadium, bro. <laughs> Days after joining Man City, he crashed that his car wild. and was found to be in possession of 5,000 euros. When asked why he had so much cash on him, he simply replied, I'm rich. Because I am rich. Yeah, this One of Mario what? Balotelli's most iconic moments occurred during the 2011 Manchester Derby, where he scored a brace in a resounding 6-1 victory over local rivals Manchester United. In a memorable celebration, Balotelli lifted his shirt to reveal Why a message me? that read, Why always me? I hate I hate things like that. A few days later, it was reported that he set his house on fire after starting fireworks in his bathroom for United. Job, in a memorable bro. celebration, Balotelli but lifted his shirt that Why always me thing? I hate people read, who always like throw throw rocks and then hide their hands. I think that's the phrase. Throw rocks in a glass. Not in a glass house, but yeah. Throw rock, hide their hands, and then try to... What you blaming me for, nigga? You the one who did it. Fuck. Why always me? A few days later, it was reported that he set his house on fire after starting fireworks in his bathroom. In the summer of 2012, he would score against the Republic of Ireland at the Euros and would refuse to celebrate his goal. When he was asked why he didn't celebrate, he responded, I am paid to score goals. Why should I celebrate them? When a mailman delivers a letter, does he Man, celebrate he it? Tried the so following hard game, he scored a brace in the quarterfinal to knock Germany out and delivered one of his most iconic ah, yeah. celebrations. There's in his final seasons thumbnails. at Man City, Balotelli became uncoachable and had a lot of disciplinary issues. City would have enough of it and sold him to AC Milan in 2013 Not and what wish. will be the start of his journeyman career as he found it difficult to stay at a club. He would shuffle between AC Milan and Liverpool before joining French side Nice in 2016. He would go on to play for Marseille, Brescia, Monza, and have stints in Turkey and Switzerland. There is no doubt that Balotelli's struggles with discrimination forged his personality, Look but if he had had a little bit of focus and control, teammate. he would have lasted longer at the top of the game. Talking about control, the next footballer hey, on my list lost much. control, and he is the footballer that perfectly represents the sin of gluttony. <sighs> gluttony is characterized by having a limitless appetite and the overconsumption of anything due to indiscipline. Damn, you could put a lot of footballers on there you could put Ronaldinho you could put R9 fat ass you could put Eden Hazard fat ass there's it, multiple uh, footballers out there who be eating Lukaku big ass 
Hey, man. One footballer whose legacy was hugely affected by indiscipline is Ronaldinho. When talking about football greats, you simply can't avoid mentioning Ronaldinho, as he was one of the greatest players of his generation and was a key player in bringing Magic Barcelona man, back bro. to its glory days in the early 2000s. He was instrumental in the 2004-2005 season as he led Barcelona to their first La Liga title in six years, scoring nine goals and providing 15 assists. He was so good that he received a standing ovation from Real Madrid fans at the Bernabeu, becoming the second player since Maradona in 1983 hey, to, to achieve it. such an honor. Got some His good best tea. season would come in the 2005-2006 season, where he inspired Barcelona to their first Champions League title in 14 years, contributing 26 goals and providing Sauce. 25 assists in 45 appearances in all competitions. His outstanding performances earned him the 2005 Ballon d'Or and the FIFA Player of the Year award. However, as Ronaldinho entered his peak years, he fell into alcoholism and developed a reputation as a notorious party boy yeah. and would allegedly show up tipsy to training. Although Ronaldinho's love for partying didn't start at Barcelona, in his earlier years at PSG, he fell out with coach Luis Fernandez, who accused Ronaldinho of overindulging in the Parisian nightlife. Every morning I would talk yeah, to Ronnie and explain boy. to him He's that he was on the wrong track. His indiscipline led to a decline in his form in subsequent seasons at Barcelona. Despite his enormous talent, he was no longer the player he once was, and his performances were nowhere near his best. He was also seen as a bad influence on younger players in the dressing room, especially to young Lionel Messi. Damn. In the summer of 2008, Barcelona parted ways with Ronaldinho, selling him to AC Milan. His move to Milan would signal the beginning of the end of his career. He had three decent seasons at Milan winning the league in 2010 before heading back to Brazil at just 31. He would play for Flamengo, Atletico Monero, and in 2014, he would join Mexican side Carretaro. That boy played in, in Liga Mackey's dance. Sorry, he was watched at 31. He was watched pretty early. He looked like a completely different dude. He right went here. back to Brazil a year later to play for Fluminense before going to India to play futsal. Ronaldinho announced his retirement in 2018 at the age of 38, and three years later in 2023, it was reported that he had gone bankrupt after being unable to pay taxes Obviously. to the Brazilian government. Yeah, Talking about broke. bankruptcy, the next player on my list <laughs> took yo. drastic measures to avoid ever going bankrupt, and he is the player that I have chosen to represent the sin of greed. Greed, greed is greed, defined as an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth or power. Now, greed, I don't know a lot of footballers in terms of greed or speaking for greed i guess you could probably say like a Mbappe or something but american sports you can classify all the damn athletes put all the damn athletes under the category of greed bro There's, and people apply it they apply athletes to being greedy a footballer who Get has embraced money. his greediness is odion akalo odion akalo was born in ajagunle nigeria one of the worst slumps in africa from a young age, Igalo witnessed firsthand the harsh realities of poverty and the daily struggle for survival. As a child, he saw football as a means to escape poverty and would horn his skills on the dusty pitches in the neighborhood. Igalo's big break came in 2014 when he joined championship side Watford partnering with he was Troy a cool Deeney hero. as the face of Watford's attack. In his first season in the Premier League, Igalo and his strike partner Troy Deeney would be crucial for Watford's survival in the Premier League with Igalo scoring 16 league goals while Dini scored 15. However, Igalo and Dini never got along in the team. Oh. Igalo was overly ambitious and would attempt to score from almost impossible situations instead of passing to Dini. Damn. This resulted in tension between the two of them, as they often competed against each other rather than work together. Dini once revealed an instance against Manchester United where Igalo refused to pass to him despite being in a better position to score. I I'll never forget, Man United away. Shit. He's just got to square it and I'm tapping it in. Because we're both in, we both beat the offside track. That's the worst, you know. Yeah. And all he's got to do is square it. Yeah, that's and the you know one. the one, if he squares it, I score. Yeah, score. We'll yeah, get more it. chances. Get more chances. And you'll yeah. probably score. Yeah, they'll again. come out and that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He half passes it, half shoots, like he doesn't do either. Yeah, yeah. And the hair just like, it just rolls to him. Yeah, yeah, ball, we got a yeah, win. Yeah, exactly. We lose the game 1 0. Following a standout 2015 2016 season where he was a strong contender for the Premier League's Golden Boot, Igalo Ooh. sparked numerous rumors about departing Watford for a bigger club. But however, during the 2017 January transfer window, Igalo made a surprising move to Chinese Super League. Chinese! Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy, for that guap, huh? I think when when Saudi Arabia started signing everybody, I think everybody was like, they looking at this dude and not too crazy no more because he was the first one to sign for the bag because they gave him a lot of money, I'm assuming. Side Cheng Chun Yatai. There, he secured a staggering weekly wage of 300,000 euros, Ooh, yeah. a significant increase from his previous 30,000 euros per week at Watford. 
In his second season in China, despite scoring 21 goals with Changchun Yatai, the team was relegated. He allegedly turned down the opportunity to join Barcelona and transferred to another Chinese side, Shanghai Shenhua, on a 400,000 euro. Hey, he know what he want. <laughs> that boy wants the guap. He say, hey, people are in it for different things. You got to realize where he came from. He came from the slums. He probably don't give a damn about football glory and, and winning Champions Leagues and trophies. He say, bro, I need to get paid. You feel me? Deal, making him one of the richest African footballers at the time. In 2020, Igalo accepted a massive pay cut of 100,000 euros per week deal to join his dream club, See? Manchester United. Now he got his money. Now it's time to go back to, you know, go back to the uh, Europe. Loan. After the end of his loan spell at Manchester United in January 2021, many fans hoped he would stay in Europe. Igalo, however, joined the Saudi Super League side <laughs> Al-Shabaab on a 200,000 euros per week deal. Back. A year later, he paid. transferred to Al-Hilal, where he received around $170,000 per week. In the summer of 2023, Igalo joined his third Saudi League club al Weda on a free transfer for a $90,000 per week deal. At the end, we're playing this football because of money. Even though you have 10 million trophies, hey. you can't use that to go and buy food in the Super Hey! Clap it up! I feel you! No cap, like I say, this is the American mentality that we have over here in American sports. Our athletes don't give a damn about winning. And, and unfortunately, that, that does, that is unfortunate when it comes to as a viewer standpoint, a spectator standpoint. But then boys, he just, I'm glad that he is real about it. He is telling, he, hey, he not lying and saying that, oh, this and that, I won't play in time. No, he say, bro, I'm here to get money. I'm here to get paid. By market, so I will choose money. I'm not those those players that will come and say that we are playing football for passion, this and all that. Bro, it's money. At the exactly, end of all this, exactly. see people that is going to Saudi Arabia. Exactly. Considering his tough childhood, I guess you can't really fault him for him. choosing to acquire as much money as possible instead of trying to play at a high level. Although his greediness has made him a fortune, it has also drawn resentment from fans and teammates. Talking about resentment, the next footballer off. on my list, let his resentment get the best of him, and he is the footballer that represents the sin of envy. Envy, envy is defined jealous. as jealousy over the blessings and achievements of others. Jealousy off top, Rafael Leal, right now AC Milan, that boy is jealous of Christian Pulisic, really everybody on the team. You might as well drop the whole AC Milan roster, they're all jealous of Captain America, Christian Pulisic, because he out there outshining them. A footballer who didn't hide his jealousy for another player is Dejan Lovren. Dejan Lovren? Lovren was an integral part of Liverpool's resurgence in recent years. Okay, pool, his partnership with Van Dijk at the heart of Liverpool's defense was crucial for Liverpool in winning the UEFA Champions League in 2019 oh, the and their team. first league title in 30 years in 20. 2020. In the earlier years, in 2018, before Liverpool won either of those trophies, they faced Real Madrid in the Champions League final. Liverpool were hoping to win their first Champions League title in 13 years, but things quickly took a side turn in the 25th minute when Sergio Ramos seemed oh. to intentionally injure Liverpool's main yeah. man Mohamed Salah. The absence of Salah weakened Liverpool as they lost 3-2 to Real Madrid, who made it a record 13 Champions League title. The loss was a difficult one for Lovren to take as he felt his team lost because of Ramos's deliberate intent to take oh, his sure. best friend out of the game. Lovren never forgave Ramos and exacted his revenge when Croatia faced Spain in the UEFA Nations League in November 2018 while contesting a He's header like, Get up, bro. an elbow that caught Sergio Ramos on the head. Fortunately for Ramos, he didn't suffer any injury. However, Croatia won the game, and after the match, Lovren posted a cryptic video on his Instagram which was targeted at Sergio Ramos. Ah, uh ha! -huh. 3-2 Pa ti pričaj majstore Na konferenciji majstore To to pičke obične in a later interview, Lovren confessed his deliberate intentions to injure hey Ramos. Talk. I hit him with my elbow and told him that we were level. I don't want to make a big story, but I think Ramos injured my friend Salah deliberately, so it was time for him to pay for what he had done. See, I don't really think that fit. This fits the category for for envy. This sounds like revenge to me. 2022, Salah posted a tweet that read, "We have a score to settle after Real Madrid overcame Man yeah, City to qualify for the Champions League final." Who Real lost. Madrid would again prove to be too strong for. Liverpool as they went on to defeat Liverpool in the final, making it a record 14 Champions League titles. Hey man, what a great ass video. Hey, shout out Zen Man. So like I said, get that man to 10,000 subscribers. Let me go ahead and subscribe. I'm tripping. Like the video up. Hey, hand clap for that boy. Seven deadly sins as footballers. I enjoyed myself for sure. Hey, I'm out.